friends, I'm Erin. This is Erin Go Live, and this is going to be my summer pile of possibilities, the books that I'm hoping to get through for the summer um, for various reading projects and just for funsies. So I am going to have some um, some book club books that I don't know what they are yet. Uh, so there will be some additions to this list, but let's just get into what we're, uh, what, we're, what, we're what we have so far. So first thing I'm going to start with are just the books for fun. These don't fulfill any sort of prompts or just books that I want to read. Now, I feel like I'm in my Stephen King era right now. I just, I bought four Stephen Kings recently. I read The Shining recently and uh, loved it. I'm probably going to possibly today, I'm filming, filming this on Memorial Day, by the way, um, the official start of summer, right? This is Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption. I think Shawshank Redemption is one of the greatest movies of all time. So I'll see how the book stacks up. And then similar, great, great movie, Stand By Me. Um, the original story was The Body by Stephen King. And, uh, Cool story, I guess, maybe. Um, in the movie, the the train bridge they're going they're going across here is actually in Santa Cruz. It's just barely down from the Santa Cruz boardwalk. Um, and I've I've gone across that. So it's pretty pretty cool thing. And then we have Tin Man about oh no, sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> then we have Tin Man by Sarah Winman. I almost said Sarah Waters. Um, this was like all over the place in 2018, 2019, something like this, something like that. And um, Alice and Michael are 12 year old boys when they first become friends. For a long time, it's just the two of them cycling the streets of Oxford, Ox uh, Oxford, not awkward, Oxford, teaching themselves how to swim, discovering poetry, la 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 la. Um, many years later, Ellis is married to Annie and Michael is nowhere in sight, which leads to the question, what happened in the years between? So sounds like uh, kind of a dual timeline maybe multiple perspectives. I'm not sure, but it's a nice shorty and it sounds like a very summary book and it just looks like a super fun summary cover as well. Then I have a book that so many of my books are influenced by booktube in particular or, you know, the bestsellers. And there's very few books that I just see in the bookstore and pick up and like, oh, that's, I want to read that. And that is the case with Bad Fruit is a Super Shiny by Ella King. Um, and like, what is that cover? It just makes me so curious. What is going on with that cover? Um, and I think this takes place in like, was it Sri Lanka? Singaporean Mother. I think it t actually takes place in Oxford. Um, and it's like the mother is becoming unhinged in some way. Um, I don't want to read too much about it. Um, I originally read the blurb and everything, but I kind of want to go into it a little bit blind. It's a good thing about having a terrible memory is uh, you can learn things about books and then completely forget them and it feels like a surprise. And then I have Heartstoppers volume, volumes four and five. Just feels very summery and light and fun. And then a book that I just picked up where I need to take the you take the sticker off, but this is a, what, what, the, what attracted me was the beautiful sprayed edges there. I just, I love that color. Yeah, color. And then on the cover, uh, it says a cozy fantasy steeped with love. So this is Rebe Rebecca Thorne's Can't Spell Treason Without Tea. And um, these people run a bookshop and it says, all Raina and Keon want is to open a bookshop that serves tea while firelight drips between the rafters, but Raina works as one of the queen's private guards and Keon is the most powerful mage in existence. Leaving, leaving their lives isn't so easy. So, you know, in the, in the vein of, um, oh, what was that one with the ogre? I'm blanking on it. You know what I'm talking about. So now we actually get into the readathons, the kind of reading with a purpose books. So Shelley Swearingen is running historical fiction readathon. Really love historical fictions. A lot of my fiction, a lot of my favorite books are historical fiction, but for some reason I don't tend to be picking them up. Haven't been picking them up very often recently. So that is going to change. So the first one I have, I did not take the stickers off the books, the price tags. Love half price books. Um, so this is the fourth prompt, which is uh, spe speculative or mad, or bleh, which is to read a historical fiction book with a speculative or magical element. And this is The Invisible Hour by Alice Hoffman. This was recommended by Melinda at Web of Stories. She did a video, uh, one of her five on Fridays recommending five historical fiction books for this readathon. Um, and I, this will be my first Alice Hoffman. Also, it's kind of a short one. So um, that might have that might have been part of why I picked that Hoffman. Then my book club book is, oh, what did this, when and where does this take place? Um, oh, this one's related to the Scarlet Letter. Um, and that's, that's all I'm gonna, that's all I'm, it's, it's just related to the Scar Scarlet Letter. So that's all I'm gonna, know about that one. And then this is Pelican Girls by Julia Mollier. 
and this takes place in um, between Paris, was 1720? 1720 Paris and New Orleans. And I think it's like French nurses going back and forth and like patients going back and forth between the two. Um, and this, this um, satisfies the prompt of setting the country you're from as one of the settings is, from, is New Orleans. And then the second prompt is a historical fiction book that is set in a place different from the country you're from. And I have Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden. Um, so not only does this fulfill the set, uh, go along with historical fiction readathon, but I'm also doing um, a project where I'm reading um, all 100 books on the PBS Great American Read list. And this is what number, this is number 45 on that list. We then have to read a historical fiction, uh, a classic historical fiction book. And I'm currently listening to the audio, audiobook of Gone with the Wind for one of my book clubs by Margaret, Margaret I can't say it, Margaret Mitchell. Um, and I just love, I love that color and it matches what I'm wearing today. This guy is a chunker. I think the audiobook is like 49 hours long and I'm maybe a quarter of the way through it, but really enjoying it. It'll be a fun one to discuss. Scarlet is Scarlett O'Hara is not the most likable character, so I'm 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 really interested to see like more about that and get to know the Rhett Butler character more because so far he's just been in like a smidge. Oh, also Sue Jackson of Sue Jackson is uh, hosting again the, the Big Book Summer, and so Memoirs of a Geisha and Gone with the Wind satisfy Big Book Summer, uh, satisfy as big books, um, qualify as big books. Uh, and a book, a big book is deemed any book greater than 400 pages. So Gone with the Wind certainly satisfies um, that criteria. And this is 428 for Memoirs of a Geisha. Um, then we also have for, yeah, Big Book Summer, John Irving's A Prayer for Owen Meany. I read an Owen, or not an Owen Meany. I read a John Irving book probably 10 or more years ago. He's my friend. She, he is my friend's, man, I'm just stumbling. He's my friend's favorite author. So she had gifted me a book. It had something to do with like a like sailor guy and his daughter and there was like tattoos. And that's really all I remember. I think I want to say it was in France. Um, but anyway, uh, Prairie for Owen Meany is number 26 on that PBS Great American Reads list. And then um, another, um, not sure what number this one is, but another on that list. Um, and for June on the Range, we have Lonesome Dove by Larry, Larry McMurtry. I started reading this last summer. Um, I was trying to read it while I was camping and I was just like way too distracted. And then I think it got like put with my camping stuff. And so I didn't, couldn't find it for a while. So finally have this um, in hand and this will be definitely one of my big books for the summer. Okay, so this is a very big tippy stack o books there. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this without hitting myself in the face with it. Um, anyway, I'd love to know though if you've read any of these books or there we go. Are you participating in any of these readathons? Thank you for watching. Remember, every day is a great day for a great day, no matter what.